The wanderer stood atop the crumbling cliff, eyeing the shadowy landscape below. The tall grass quaked at his feet, every blade shivering away from the soles of his worn rubber boots. The wind was fierce at such a height. The pinnacle of tortured moans tossed his clumped hair and whipped at his apron. The chainsaw felt heavy in his hand, his fingers frozen around the grip in a painful inability to let go. Occasionally, he squeezed them around the deteriorated foam handle, feeling every digit pop in its restless embrace. He could feel the aura of power calling to him, an intoxicating tether reeling him to the next worthy soul that could feed the teeth of a saw. Far below the rocky cliff was a rundown house, one that was built along the edge of a quarry. It looked like he was barely standing near the edge, ready to cave at any second. The sinister presence seemed to radiate deep within the walls of the shoddy structure. The chainsaw man felt the overwhelming sensation of bloodlust, boiling in his fuel-festering veins. A feeling that the tall grass seemed to respond to. The blades flattened against the ground and shook in fear as the boiling rose throughout the wanderer. A feeling the masked man himself had no trouble keeping under control. The mask on his face shook, vibrating so fast the outer rim was a blur. The man squeezed his fist and forced the adrenaline to subside, promising that soon it would be able to take the reins and swing the saw to its heart's content. Inside the beaten home was an enemy much stronger than the previous, one so strong he could feel its aura bleed out through the siding. The wanderer took a step forward and free fell, letting his arms out to embrace the cool wind. The sudden rush of air whipped his wild hair as he watched himself plummet, feeling nothing but the thrill of the impending massacre. Even as he fell, he held his gaze to the house, feeling the demonic aura like an echoing heartbeat. It called to him, a song of anguish luring him in with a gentle, caressing hand. The ground rapidly approached, and the air whistled in the wanderer's ears, holding his lusting stare as he positioned himself at the last second, his boots meeting the earth so hard, the ground shook in protest. The bones in his legs shifted, a temporary inconvenience that would sort itself out before he even made it to the front porch of the gloomy destination. There was a sort of gravel driveway leading to the building, thousands of human teeth crunching under his boots, where gravel would be appropriate. There were no roads connecting to the driveway, only the rocky wall in which the wanderer had just descended. It was almost like it was paved there just for him. The crackling mixture of molars and canines shifted under the weight of each step. The grinding sound was pleasant to him. It would have taken hundreds of victims to make such a thing, and the power of the individual responsible would be something worth seeing. The wind sang across the valley, wind that seemed to come from the direction of the rundown house. The wanderer marched up the drive, the crunching teeth getting louder the closer he got to the porch. There were glinting beads watching him from under the steps. Two little glassy eyes shining in the darkness behind the steps. The wanderer continued his pace and watched the eyes without the faintest feeling of interest. Each step closer showed more of its appearance, cheeks and ears becoming visible until the entire face revealed itself. It was the head of a child, 
only a few years old. It looked to be floating in place, holding itself up with thin jellyfish-like tentacles. Its mouth was open blankly, and its eyes tracked the wanderer as he drew close. He stopped and watched the face silently, feeling a trickle of power seep from under the shadows of the porch. The floating head looked like it wanted to say something, but the only sound to escape its lips was a repetitive gasp. Other orbs began to materialize around the child's head, little specks of pink neon blinking to life in sets. Two, then four, a dozen, and two dozen. The sense of power grew as the orb surrounded the floating head. And then, in an instant, the head was gone. Hundreds of pointing teeth snapped down and devoured it, suddenly turning it into digestible pieces. The many eyes drew closer, followed by the skittering body of an oily spider abomination. It had too many legs to count, and they twitched in all directions, each appendage barbed like a scorpion stinger. It hissed defiantly, as if to warn the Wanderer to back off. The Wanderer simply stared at the arachnid hybrid, even as it revealed two crab-like pincers dripping with poison. The rusted iron mask strapped to the Wanderer's face just looked at it unamused, its closed eyes and a motionless visor offering nothing at its aggression. The chainsaw remained limp at his side. The spider hissed once more and retreated to an unseen hiding spot under the house. The wanderer said nothing and climbed the steps, each board aching under his weight as he worked his way to the front door. All the windows were boarded up and there was no way to see inside. The wanderer tried the knob and was surprised to find it unlocked. Inside... The house was derelict. A thick haze of dust wafted through the abode like a cloud. The heavy particles catching cracks of light through the slits in the windows. It looked abandoned. Plain living room furniture staged and unused like a forgotten movie set. Old rags and illegible newspapers littered the floor, along with random discarded trash. The garbage itself didn't make any sense like it was someone's inclination of what garbage should look like. At first glance, it looked like nobody was home. The wanderer took a step in and panned his head across the room. His body was stiff, in need of a kill, and the effort it would require from his body. Stagnant veins begged for stimulation and the rusted blade felt empty in his hand. He moved through the house autonomously, and determined to find the reason he was drawn here. There would be sufficient sustenance here. He wouldn't settle for otherwise. In the living room, there was nothing. When the empty kitchen failed him as well, he took down the hall to the bedroom which produced only a heavily stained mattress and more boarded windows. The wanderer looked around slowly, trying to pinpoint the heart of what had called him there. Outside, the wind assaulted the house, whistling cool air fighting its way through the siding to produce a draft. The air howled its tortured groan, the same tune the wanderer had heard hundreds of times on his possessed search for challenge. But still, he craned his head. There was something off about this particular tune. An additional pain that sounded too close to him to be a part of the chorus. It was a moan, a tired bleeding of weakness. And it was close. The wanderer looked at the floorboards beneath his feet and tightened his grip on the chainsaw. Below, the hunchback waddled leisurely amongst the chain stock. 
A single light bulb hung from above, swaying in the draft from the wind outside. Men and women of every age surrounded him in the dingy basement. Those who couldn't hide in the dark simply covered their faces and whimpered. With their hope long lost, their only choice was to huddle obediently on the filthy concrete. Most were beaten and starved, stripped of their clothing and forced to wait in the perpetual line that led to the large wooden door. It was locked at all times, and only opened when the master required it to. The hunchback, his shrunken and malformed body garbed in a cloak stitched from the skin of many who had been processed, narrowed his eyes on a young woman. She was shivering and hugging herself, looking up at him with a single good eye, the other heavily bruised and swollen. He lurched toward her like a goblin, every two steps followed by a slap to the floor to keep from falling over. His other hand held dearly a key around his neck, one made of shiny brass. The young woman wanted to turn away, but was too weak to do so, only capable of helplessly watching as he shuffled over to her. The hunchback caressed her thigh with a bony finger, running the digit along the outline of ribs, in the flutter of her stomach as she whimpered. He dug into his cloak with a giggle and produced a sharp, bony knife, one that he used to gently carve into the flesh of her abdomen. Her pain was hushed and disassociated, but he still found pleasure in it. The way her flesh cut easily, tender and lean, she would be a perfect next choice. Above, the ceiling exploded, followed by the heavy impact of a large, broad form. The hunchback wiped debris and dust from his face, in time to see the solid bulk of the wanderer crouched before him. From behind a false metal face, the intruder was looking silently at the ground, where his knee had completely obliterated the young girl's face. Her head, along with it. He was already climbing to his feet, leaning on the blade of a rusted chainsaw to help himself up. His joints cracked as he stood tall, and the other cattle shrugged away from him, clawing and thrashing at each other to hide in the dark. Flustered and angry, the hunchback shouted at him, incoherent syllables meant for an insult, falling on deaf ears. The wanderer shrugged him off, and looked at the large wooden door. The master's room. There was no way he'd be allowed such entry. It was forbidden. With a scowl, the hunchback threw the bony knife at him to get his attention. The handle bounced off the wanderer's face mask harmlessly, and disappeared into the darkness of the damp dungeon. The wanderer stopped and looked at the hunchback his rusted face of closed eyes and mouth staring blankly in annoyance. He could hear the intruder squeezing the handle of the chainsaw, the twist of leather in his elbow-length gloves. The hunchback teased and dangled the key out to him, the only means of opening the door to the master's room. Its polished brass finish shined in the overhead light, catching the wanderer's attention. The chainsaw-wielding man looked from the large wooden door to the key and reached out to take it. In a swift movement, the hunchback laughed and tore the key from his neck, promptly swallowing it. The wanderer watched the cold iron work down the hunchback's wrinkly neck, already working its way to his stomach. The wanderer watched him for a moment before looking at the door again. The sounds of wet chopping echoed off the walls as the butcher cleaved the arm from its shoulder. Heavy, precise swings made a quick work of it, and soon the limb came free in a gush of blood. The spatter drizzled down the butcher's face, the burlap sack sewn permanently as a second skin with crudely cut eye holes. 
The man the arm belonged to, long dead and decayed, stared up at him with lifeless eyes. He returned the stare from the darkness of his mask. Obscured eyes portrayed no emotion for the massacring that had taken place. The butcher buried his cleaver in the corpse's forehead and let its dead weight hit the table and tossed the severed arm into a bucket. The room was dim, the scattered beams of gray light from the gloomy sky outside shining in through a single egress window. The light was enough to illuminate his workspace, the same dull glow painting the importances of the room. The wooden table and chopping block, the wall of hung butcher's cleavers and knives, the many, many meat hooks dangling from above on their grimy chains. There wasn't a single inch of the room not covered in arterial spray. The room looked more like a hollowed out cave than a workshop. The butcher rolled his shoulder, stretching stiff and rippling muscle that pulsed against the straps of his apron. Now that it was cleared of limbs, he grabbed the torso and held it up to the many jingling chains hanging above. Links and hooks sticky with blood and gore, all stemming from a grand spiderweb of them several feet above. With practice and delicacy, he pierced the torso and let it hang, and taking pride as it joined the sway of the dozens before it. He admired his work, each victim dismembered uniquely to be on display with their special hook. On the other side of the door, the butcher heard a ruckus, one of the cattle must have gotten out of line. He paid in no mind, pulling the cleaver free from the freshly hanging torso and returning it to the wall. He looked over the blades, each dull and caked in blood, but still worthy enough of use. Behind him, something slammed against the large wooden door. The force was enough to rattle the hinges and kicking up the dust in the dimly lit room. A cry from the hunchback rang loud, a sound the most curious in the redundant routine he was accustomed to. He felt his blood boil at the disturbance, unseen eyes immediately searching for the right tool to deliver punishment. He scoured the wall of cleavers, and taking note of the different shapes of blades and the types of cuts they would provide. Something slammed the door again, the harder this time. The hunchback was silent, something unusual for the pesky beast. The butcher looked up at the door expectantly, his large hands cracking knuckles as they curled into fists. He hadn't had a visitor in quite some time. The butcher watched as the door exploded, splintering chunks of wood breaking away from the hinges like a bomb had detonated. The deadbolt tore a portion of the wall with it, clearly unable to contain what wanted in. The butcher watched the doorway, wondering what was causing such noise. The heavy-set visitor stepped in, and the butcher noticed two things immediately. The rusted chainsaw held at one side, the bleeding remnants of the hunchback in the other. Holding him by his caved skull, the visitor tossed the body of the hunchback back at the butcher's feet before looking up expectantly through a metal mask. The wanderer had found his adversary. He was bigger than he expected, nearly seven feet of muscle, held back by an apron quite like his own, his face hidden by a burlap sack. His legs were the size of telephone poles, the stretch of canvas pants barely containing his bulk. The wanderer looked upon the giant of a man and ready the chainsaw in both hands. Behind him, the many prisoners fought to escape from the hole in the ceiling, frantically climbing over each other in hopes for a better life. The butcher looked at the body of the hunchback, his face caved to a pulp like a broken pumpkin. His only form of mourning was a labored exhale before immediately turning to the wall of cleavers to his right. He reached up with both colossal arms and selected a cleaver from the very top, one with a foot-wide blade and a handle to accommodate its size. The butcher returned with his weapon of choice, 
brandishing it with a flex of his forearms. The pull of a ripcord, the scream of the saw, the wanderer's blade roared to life. The thick black smoke erupting from the machine as he bellowed a battle cry. With abnormal speed, he crossed the room with a leap, swinging down vertically with his weight behind it. The butcher raised a cleaver in defense, a flurry of sparks grinding off his blade as the teeth bit angrily. He held the cleaver firm, pushing against the momentum of the wanderer as he bounced back from his assault. Veins ran taut in his arms as he steadied the cleaver, face to face with the metal mass that invaded his home. Muscles flexed and he thwarted his strike, and the wanderer immediately came down with another. As the chainsaw's blade blurred inches from his burlap sack, the butcher sidestepped and grabbed the wanderer by the back of the neck and slammed him into the table. The surface erupted into broken lumber as the wanderer crashed into the floor, the impact jarring his limbs as he was met with solid concrete. Before he could toss the rubble off of him, the wanderer looked to see the heavy weight of the butcher's boot immediately following his head. He rolled to the side, barely missing the stomp, and a spider web of cracks formed where his skull had been. The wanderer slashed upward with the chainsaw as he climbed to his feet, knocking the cleaver away before coming down once more. The butcher was surprisingly fast for his size, bobbing and weaving away from the screaming blade before retaliating with his own. The sparks flew, and every clash lit up the room, and the scent of the black smoke mixed with the rot and decay in the room. The wanderer swung wildly, a maniacal cry growing behind the mask with every deflected strike. In between slashes, the wanderer connected a solid backhand, one the butcher shrugged off like it was nothing. He raised the large cleaver and brought it down harder, forcing the wanderer to take a knee and brace against it. Even as the wanderer folded under the strength of the butcher, he relished in the sickly sweet taste of power he held, one that seemed to grow the longer the fight went on. It radiated off of him like a bloody fog. The wanderer braced for the next slash, only to feel the unexpected grasp of the butcher grabbing him by the throat. The headbutt he received was hard enough to shake the house. The wanderer felt the metal mass crunch everything behind it, shattering his nose and blacking both eyes. Before he could recover, the uppercut that followed hit harder, sending him sprawling across the floor like he had been hit by a truck. He rolled to a stop next to the deceased hunchback, still clenching the rumbling saw. The blood pooled from behind the mask, and trickling onto the concrete as he picked himself up off the ground. The wanderer's rusted false face started to vibrate intensely, the edges of metal falling out of focus as it shook. He looked to see the butcher momentarily flex to taunt him, massive shoulders popping as he squeezed the cleaver's handle. He rushed in again, leaping across the room with the crude blade held high. He brought it down with a shout, watching the blade separate flesh and guts in a powerful sweep. The damage was overwhelming, so distractingly so, the butcher didn't realize he had cleaved the body of the hunchback down the middle. Lurching through the entrails of the human shield, the wanderer wrapped his arms around the waist of the butcher and suplexed him with inhuman speed. The concrete floor burst under the combined weight, the shoulders and head of the butcher smashing chunks into powder as his neck broke sideways. As the butcher thrashed weakly, the wanderer elbowed him in the temple, sending him sprawling awkwardly. The wanderer grunted and snaked his arms around his legs and twisted his body, pulling his heavy opponent into a spinning lift. The butcher clawed through the rubble as he was swung into motion, whipping through the air like a pendulum. After three rotations of momentum, the wanderer let him fly, and the butcher catapulted into the wall of cleavers like a missile. Bones and concrete alike shattered as his body caved in the wall, blades of every size raining down and clattering to the floor. The wanderer dashed forward instantly, the chainsaw screaming as he brought it down on the butcher's shoulder, cutting diagonally as his head lolled. The jagged teeth ate greedily, buzzing through flesh and bone until it tasted intestines. The wanderer stared into the burlap sack, which frothed red through the fabric. 
The butcher parted down the middle, peeling apart in a spray that coated the entire room. The engine gorged on the fluid, chugging along as the plume of smoke exhaled like a freight train. The wanderer's hands jolted as the saw jammed, sputtering to a stop as the teeth bit into the butcher's pelvis. Flayed almost in two, the hulking butcher went limp, his head resting against the broken wall. The wanderer wheezed behind the mask, each breath heaving through bubbling blood as he admired his work and the devastation caused by his oil-burning companion. Relishing in his victory, he placed a boot on his enemy's chest and started to pull the blade free. An explosion of energy erupted from the butcher's body and a burst of hot air hit the wanderer like a wall. The limp butcher's hand sprang to life one grabbing the wanderer by the hair, while the other drove a meat hook under his chin. The hook punctured until it stuck into the inside of the metal mask, and his vision suddenly clouded and felt the tight wrap of a chain around his neck. With an angry pull of a chain, the wanderer was lifted off the ground and kicking his feet as each consecutive pull brought him closer to the ceiling. The wanderer caught glimpses of the scene before him in dizzy passes, his dead weight spinning as he dangled helplessly. The butcher stood awkwardly, his separated body pulsing as it freed the chainsaw from his midsection. The power tool fell amongst the other weapons, and as the wanderer tried and failed to free himself, the butcher gathered around another chain from the floor. He looped it around his body several times and pulled it tight, groaning painfully as his body rejoined itself. Every breath from behind the bloodstained sack came in a cloud of steam, and the aura of power emanating from him was deafening. In his blind desperation, the wanderer felt for the chainsaw, an invisible tether reaching for the tool as the butcher tied a loose knot in the chains. He rigged it in place with a metal spike, and the coil of links stretched taut against his bleeding mass. The wanderer called for the chainsaw again, and as he contorted his fingers, the saw started to shake. The butcher reached up and felt for his head, seething with anger as he worked to reset his broken neck. The chainsaw skittered across the floor and bounced toward the wanderer's outstretched hand. Hanging helplessly, he pulled on the ripcord until it sputtered to life and held it up to saw the chains constricting him. And the butcher rolled his adjusted neck, tendons and vertebrae impossibly recovering from his previous annihilation. He worked his shoulders against the chains and tested his movements as sparks showered the wanderer, a guttural roar radiating from his lips. Just as the saw was almost through the chain, the butcher bounded after him, each step angrier than the last. The chain snapped and the wanderer fell free, just as the butcher slammed into him. The saw buried into the butcher's face as he tackled him into the wall. Together, they punched through the wall of the basement and into the earth behind it. In a rush of flailing limbs, they burst through the side of the quarry, exchanging blows as they tumbled over layers of steep rock. The gloomy wind tossed at their clothes and blood painted the air, each punch and chainsaw slash sending a spatter to a growing avalanche. The butcher threw jabs and hooks with every topple, and the chainsaw nicked at his chains and scored his flesh. Even with the hook still stuck in his jaw, the wanderer fought back ruthlessly, rending in weak spots until the momentum was too much to work the saw. The butcher wrapped both hands around his throat, shoving the meat hook further as the wanderer dug a thumb into his eye. Like a boulder rolling down a mountain, they bounced in unison down the multiple cliffs of rock. Each impact tried to force them apart, but their death roll resumed each time they hit air. The world blurred around them in a barrage of kicks, punches, and knees, and just as it felt like they would fall forever, a sudden stop came in the form of mud and standing water. The splash was tremendous. Disfigured creatures scurried away from the pit in fear of the screaming saw. The butcher was up in an instant, Mounting the submerged wanderer and pummeling with such rage, he didn't stop even as the chainsaw bit into his stomach. The blade spun furiously, 
spraying a bloody geyser on his back as he held his enemy underwater. Through a murky film, the Wanderer watched him rain down punches, driving his head further into the sucking mud as he held onto the saw for dear life. Turning entrails to mush, the chainsaw kept working until there was nothing left to eat. Chains split and bones shaved away, but still the butcher pummeled away. With a defeated sputter, the chainsaw succumbed to lack of fuel, coming to a silent halt in the ruined torso. The wanderer battered and clawed at his attacker, their fingers coming back wet with strips of gore and burlap. He punctured eyes and dug into open wounds, but nothing would stop the punishment from the butcher. Water filled his lungs and the world started to fade, and the wanderer felt for any attempt to gain ground. The chained vessel simply would not stop, even as knuckles broke against the mask and fingernails came free. And just when the wanderer felt himself slipping away, he felt the meat hook in his jaw. The hook came free in a rip of flesh, and the wanderer shoved it upward as hard as he could. As the hook pierced through the butcher's eye socket, he felt a brief pause in the brutal beating. And the second was all it took. In the flash of an eye, the wanderer wormed out from underneath the crushing weight of the butcher and wrapped the hook's chain around his neck, just as he did moments ago. He pulled the chain taut and hurtled over the confused butcher, pulling the chain hard with both hands. He tried to fight it, but the hook ripped violently, making his body obey with every tug. The wanderer stopped him and planted a heavy boot on his back and put his whole body into a final, devastating pull. The chain worked as both a noose and a guillotine, and with a loud rip, the butcher's head came free from his body and bringing his spine along with it. Alas, the butcher fell silent. The wanderer stood victorious, letting the beheading chain fall with a splash. Thunder rumbled in the sky, and a crackle of lightning forked across it. With heavy, wheezing breaths, the wanderer looked above, just as the patter of rain started to hit the metal mask. He let out a battle cry as the rush faded, and in this smear of muddy water, it almost looked as if the face was trying to move. Slow and exhausted, the chainsaw man rolled the headless corpse over and grabbed the saw. The handle was hot to the touch, and it came free with a squelch. In the shadows of the pit, a wicked creature watched with frightened interest, a man that walked on his hands and pulled a trail of twisted entrails behind it. He watched the masked man from a distance, his upside down face observing with long ago gouged out eyes. The viscera merman shuddered as the masked man unscrewed the fuel cap of the chainsaw and tilted back his metal face right before vomiting violently into the reservoir. The burning scent of gasoline carried on the wind, and with a few pulls of the ripcord, the chainsaw came to life. Once more, without as much as a word, the wanderer left his adversary behind, sauntering through the mud almost like he was disappointed. Above the pit, the merman watched as the butcher's house started to fade away, dissolving like sand in a box. Shingles, siding, and boards fluttered away like ashen butterflies on the wind. When the merman looked back at the wanderer, he was gone, as if nothing ever happened. Hey, everybody. Nightmares Nightly here. I'd like to thank all of you for listening to the video. This was written by A Hawaiian Shirt, aka Jesse Pullins. If you like this story, he has a playlist on the channel with more of his work. And he's also a published author. You can check out his books here on Amazon. I highly suggest giving them a read. I got this one off of Aggravated Flesh, another flash fiction. 
this was the last story in the book, and it's one of my favorites. If you'd like to support him, check out his work on Amazon in the links below. And, as always, thanks for listening, everybody.